Amen. We're going to turn that into prayer. Hallelujah. I want us to talk to God just for two minutes. Amen. And when I say talk to God, it has to do with prayer. Amen. I want us to, like I was leading prayer, I said that the problem that the body of Christ or people face is not a hearing problem. Amen? Amen. It's the doing problem. Year in, year out, week in, week out, month in, month out, we hear the word of God. But, the Bible declares that blessed are ye if you do them. Amen. Amen. And what makes it look challenging or difficult to do God's will is because you have your own will. And that is the clash that is giving you to have divine fulfillment. God has his will, and that is his will we must follow. He has his objective or his plan for our life. And that is the blueprint that he wants us to follow. But when we came on planet Earth, we saw things that is directing our will. So we hear his word. Week in and week out, but we struggle to do his will. We pray tonight that, Lord, let me not only be the hearer. I beg you, Lord, let me not only be the hearer, but the grace to be the doer. He said, if any man hear my words and do them, you shall be likened unto a man that built his house on the foundation. That the rain came, the wind blew, and there were many things that happened. But the horse stood. For you to still be standing at such a time in the, in the kingdom of God like this, it, you need to have a foundation. And our foundation is doing his will. You will pray that, Lord, the grace to not only be the hearer, but to be the doer. I need that grace to do your will, to do your word. Deuteronomy says that, if that it shall come to pass, if that did it, Jenny, hacking to the voice of the Lord. That hacking means to hear and to act. He said, then I, the Lord, will set you above all nations. So America is including one of them. That it doesn't matter where you come from, your background. You can be above in this land. But if you're hacking, that's what he said. So hacking to the voice of God puts you no other place but above. Check, anybody who pay attention to God's voice, they always sit above. They don't go below, No. It doesn't matter where they come from, their race, their color, no. Anyone that hearkens to the voice of God, they sit above. They float all situations. But guess working the word of God, whether to or whether not to, it keeps you at an average level. We will pray now, Lord, the grace to be not only the hero, but to be the doer. Help me, Lord. You ready to pray? Open your heart and pray. Lift your voices. He wants to hear you. The word of God is coming. Le Quran naba santa la baba. E moriko soto yene buran naba baba. Lord, not only to be the hearer, even I was bringing your word, but to be the doer. In the name of Jesus. Leba Santa Laboran Nakasiti. Oh, 
Ibo robo ko sakata laborana ba 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 ba. Ekele ko robo katana raba lebe lebe. Lord, the grace to do. Yebo shante le ko rara ba 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 ba. Yekele borana ba. Not only to be the hearer of your word, but to be the doer of your word. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, you can only do the word if you create mm. the atmosphere for it. Amen. The Bible said the entrance of your word gave us what? Understanding light. It gave us light. And understanding to the simple. Amen. The entrance. You know, there are certain places you will not enter because the way it looks like. So the entrance, the, the way you create the entrance of God's word is what makes it sit there. David said, your word that I have, I hid in my heart. That may not go. So there's a kind of a way the word enter that you can't do anything other than the word. Amen. So you will pray for your heart condition tonight. Amen. Because the word of God can come, but it can be like a bulletproof. If your heart is like a bulletproof. Have you seen somebody wear a gunproof jacket? You just shoot and it go there and it go back, it drop. Right? So, if your heart become like that, it just come. It just go. That how you walk in the presence of God and walk out. So, we pray, Lord, prepare my heart. Prepare my heart. Work on my heart. Work on my heart to be receptive to your word. I may not like what you may be saying, but if it's best for me, help, help me to receive it. Amen. 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 No, many people, many people when they go to go in the place of prayer, they already go there with their with their agenda. When you go there with that kind of agenda, the Bible says you will answer you according to your heart desire. But it may not be he. Mm. God has something called his permissive way. And he has something called his divine way. God's permissive way is the, is the will that the children of Israel have when they say they wanted a king. So he allowed it. That is permissive way. It's not his divine way. He has a blueprint before he came on the face of the earth. Amen. You are only to live that blueprint. Amen. But if you want his permissive way, he allows you. Mm. And sometimes we go in expressing like that. We already have an answer, but we're asking him. So you say, Lord, prepare my heart to receive your word as Amen. you want it. Amen. Amen. Work on my heart. Work, I pray this prayer always. Work on my heart. That's the second prayer. Heart, point. Father, in the name of Jesus, work on our hearts. Lord, Work, right on spirit, right heart, right Work on our hearts. Work on our hearts. Lord, you say a broken heart. Pride. Oh, a contrast side pride. you will not despise. Lord, a broken you. heart. Yes, Lord, a like contrast David side you will not despise. Lord, that will be receptive for the entrance of your word, give a light. And understanding to the simple. Lord, for us to have divine understanding of God. Work on our hearts. In the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We give you the glory. We magnify your name. We honor you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Be lifted up. Above all the gods, we lift our cry and war. You know that song? Mm -hmm. Be lifted up above all the gods. We lay our crown and worship you. Be lifted up above all the gods. 
So we let out and wash it. Press and wash it, help me go ahead. Let us worship him. Above the God, so we lay and worship you. We just say, he said that we laid our crowns down. So if there's any crown that you have of yourself, maybe your education, your contact, your technical, we lay it down. We, when we come in your presence, we lay it down to worship you. We, we prostrate. We know you are a glorious God. So we lay down our crowns. The crowns how people know us or know us to be. Our technique, we lay it down. Hallelujah. We sing it once more again. Hallelujah. We lay our crowns and worship you. stand to the reading of God's word. But before we do that, I want to thank God. Thank you for his serving. Hallelujah. <laughs> Pastor Faber Cook. Hallelujah. He's one of person that God raised as a prophet from the nation I come from. Amen. Hallelujah. The day he goes back to Liberia, people see him as a voice. Because uh, we have people called to several ministry. But the ministry of the prophetic is one that people know for that. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We had prophets in other nations, but one of the prophets that God gave to our nation. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. It's just a part of his ministry in the miracle here. Yeah. But he has a ministry also in Liberia. Hallelujah. Amen. To God's people. So we want to tell God thank you for his life. Hallelujah. His calling. And also his dear wife and children, his family in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. It's a privilege to stand on this pulpit to say, Thus says the Lord, honor his covering in the name of Jesus. Quickly, Ephesians chapter 5. Hallelujah. I guess something to share with you, then uh, he will take over for me uh, on the dot. Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 5. Let's just go there quickly. We spend most time. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 13 to 16. And then I'll read also Matthew 6 to 13. Hallelujah. It's difficult for me to find myself ministering from a single text. God always bring another. That's the essence of the word of God. That is, you use scripture to confirm scripture. The struggle you see a lot of people, well, is the, is the, the, you don't use your ability to interpret God's word. Amen. Real interpretation of God's word comes from his spirit. Hallelujah. When you see a lot of cuts around, when people say, there was, a one, there was one that said that, because Jesus said that you shall never die, 
So they hold on to that. But when they, when, when, when they hear of them die, then a particular cord begins to break apart. I think some of you know what I'm talking about. So the way of interpreting God's word is by his spirit. So he will always use his one, one part of his word to confirm another part of his word. Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 5, beginning with verse 13. He said, but all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light. Say light. light. Another version says, all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light. For whatever makes manifest is what? Light. Uh -huh. Manifest means to show. So light can expose, light can what? Show. Amen. In a twinkling of an eye, when we just call up this place or switch off the light, you will see the difference. But when the light comes on, you see the difference. Amen. Amen. That was the power of light. And he said that, but all things that are exposed are made manifest. Then verse 14 says, therefore he said, awake, you who sleep, arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. Hallelujah. Amen. Christ will give you what? Light. Verse 15. See then that you walk what? Circumspectly, not as what, but as what? That you walk what? Circumspectly. Paul talking to not be unbeliever, but what? To believer. The Christians are Ephesus, or we refer to as the Ephesians. He's telling them, you carry light, you expose things. You carry light, you will manifest and things that is in darkness will show. But understand that even as much as you are doing it, be what? Be what? And walk circumspect. Not as fools. So wisdom is the ability for you to walk circumspectly. Wisdom is the ability for you to, while you are walking or manifesting light, wisdom is the ability to keep you. The next verse. Redeeming the time because the days are what? Because the days are what? There's something about evil. Sometimes we talk about it. We say it casually. And sometimes we like, we like esteem it. But it is something that is real. If it was not real, Paul would never have told them to be circumspect. Now, if you think it was only Paul talking about evil, let's go to Matthew Gospel. Chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6, verse 6. Then you will take your seat. We'll read through verse 13. He said, but you, when you pray, go into your room. And when you have shut your door, pray to your father who is in the secret place. And your father who sees in secret will what? We, now, there was the time Jesus, disciples saw that things were working when he prayed. So they said, no. Master, you have to teach us how to pray. We are seeing results. Teach us to pray the same way John taught his disciples. So teach us. So he began to give them the platform of what they should do. Now go forward to verse 7. I will run it faster. And when you pray, do not use vain repetitions as the hidden do. For they think that they will be heard for their many words. So you know there are prayers and there are vain repetitions. If you stay long in prayer, it's because you are not praying about the same thing. You are long. JVT in prayer is because you are praying about many things. So, long prayers is not the charisma to joy that you are praying well. But if you pray according to his way and his word, and you pray because why he has led you to pray, 
Sometimes the burden of prayer comes upon a particular person. They cannot leave the true room. You see God taking them from one dimension to another dimension, from another dimension. Maybe they are praying about this person, God leading to another person, this other situation to this nation, what have you. All of a sudden, you see they have spent only four hours. So he was saying that don't do it because the heathen are doing it like this for them to be seen. Can we go to verse 8? Therefore, do not be like them, for your father knows the things you have heard or before you ask him. Now, there's not a condition that you shouldn't pray. It's just to tell you that God is aware, but he wants your participation. Because the body of Christ has been so obsessed that so long they know God, they leave everything with God. It's an irresponsible Christianity where you say you leave everything with God. That is, oh, I'm safe, so it's okay. So God already know. In fact, some people read their prayers and they stick it up in their room. And they say, God, I think you see it here, I'm going to bed. He said, I wish you. But he knows about wish you what? It, 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 it depicts what? Because there is no way you will have a father you can't communicate with him. There is no way you will have a relationship you don't communicate. The day I cease to communicate with my wife in the house, then there should be something wrong. I think I'm a, I know her needs. I know her wants. I know the needs of the house. It should be a daily thing. The very time you start communicating with somebody you say you love, you already start planting something in their mind to think, and they will be right. That's why God never allowed that gap. He always came for fellowship in the garden. With Adam and Eve. They say that he came down uh, during the cool of uh, the day. It was his daily routine. It was his daily routine. He said he came. So Adam knew the time he came. So God had that flow, that flowing. So he said, when you, so in as much as you think, the Bible says that he, he knows your needs, you should also communicate. Now, that's not my, my, my emphasis. But then let's go to verse 9. It says, in this manner, therefore pray, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Can we go further? Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth, I said in heaven. Now, this Lord's prayer where we normally say, it's a platform, or it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a God. You understand it? So he was giving the God of praying. He started with all worshiping God, what have you? They said, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth, I said this in heaven. Now, let's go. He said, give us this day our daily bread. Now, the first part of the prayer has to do with prayer where you you, 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 you offer things to God, your prayers and worship. Now that one has to do with what? Yourself or your intercession. That when you begin to ask God for your daily bread, but what your daily bread has to do with everything that has access to your divine supply. Whether your career, the food you eat, your shelter, everything that gave you access to divine supply is your daily bread. Your education, your career, and what have you. So it's, that's the second part. Now see, he said, if you pray, say this. Verse 12. Verse 12. He said, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Verse 13. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Another verse said, deliver us from what? From all evil. Now, Jesus is not talking when we pray. We should pray for his deliverance for what? Evil. So Jesus understood evil. You may have your seat. Father, we thank you for your word. That is sharper than any two-edged sword. That is able to cut asunder. That is able to, to pierce our hearts. That is able to bring forth redemption, liberation. Anoint my lips and glorify yourself in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. What I'm going to be ministering in a few minutes is living in the midst of evil. How do a Christians live in the midst of evil. If you ignore that the world that we live in is an evil world, you will suffer affliction. Jesus talking about evil and Paul said what? Be circumspect. Because what? The days are what? So Paul was not saying anything contrary to what Jesus was saying or is saying. We live in a world that even evil has become digital. I was listening to someone who was confessing that is, they said that 
they, they used to rip the baby from the, from, the, from the womb of a pregnant woman by maybe laying their hands or what have you, charms. But he said that the way I operated, I just used my eye. And our pregnancy is resolved. Are you listening to me? Now, the Bible declares that if you look in the book of John, chapter 5, verse 19. Can you put on the board media? Let's work it quick. John, chapter 5, verse 19. It said, then Jesus answered and said, Lord, 1 John 5, 19. 1 John 5, 19. 1 John 5, 19. Sorry about that. Say, we know that we are of God. And the whole world lies under the ways of the wicked one. Another version says, the whole world lies in wickedness. Wickedness is a part of life. We, we live in the midst of wickedness. I was led to bring this word so you, as a child of God, you will walk consciously. You will walk right consciously. When we're about to be a part of this church, there's one thing I told uh, 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 I said, and I, I said it to our uh, leaders. I said that do not, especially when you are a leader, don't come to church casually. Hmm? Don't come to church what? Casually. Don't jump out of your bed. You are not, you are not, you are not engaged the truth when you just come. Are you listening to me? Whether you are on the praise team or wherever you are, especially when you are a leader. He said that the whole world lies in wickedness. The whole world lies in wickedness. And if the whole world lies in wickedness, and we are living in this world, but it's one thing he said that we are in this world, but we are now of this world. So how do you live in this world, but not of this world? Now, you should understand, when Jesus talked about evil, he made mention that when we pray, we should, we should pray in that way, deliver us from evil. There are a lot of things that are getting at people, getting at families, getting at homes, getting at, I mean, there are a lot of evil that is spread all around. And the Bible said that, when the world shall come to an end, knowledge will increase, but also iniquity will shall abound. Evil will increase. Evil will continue to increase. If you ignore what I'm saying, just become casual. My father passed 2022. And uh, I was just outside from there, from the country, like five years. It's like a... I had a time with him, even on the phone here, yeah, while I view. So it's like a, I want to make one or two adjustments a while I view. So it was, I was contemplating, uh, got my brothers and the others were going. And I said, maybe I may not go while I view and think. But then my brother said something to me. He said, that, you are the pastor in the family. We can't go, you stay back. That will hit me. Then something came to my mind. He said, you know the family background you came from. If you don't follow them, they may be tempted to play according to their tradition. And so long you are a child of God, the word of God is your tradition. And you are the spiritual head. If you have to get there and guard them. But before we went there, my brother-in-law, that is my older sister, Hosmum, had a, he went to a church and the servant of God, God opened his eyes, said that, I saw you people going for a funeral, but then another funeral came. So your, your whole attention was not directed to that funeral, but it was, it was directed to another funeral. And he, he, told, he told the pastor, he said, yes, it is true. You know, I lost my father-in-law. That's why, we, that's why we are talking about now the burial and what have you. I think some of the, his sons, and uh, they, they are coming. You know, but what you are saying, we pray about that. When I went down Liberia, when I went back to Africa, I went down Liberia, uh, Pastor Salas, Bishop Kuhn's spiritual father, 
you know, he was, he was uh, in the country by that time. He said to me, he said, son, I said, yes. He said that you need to pray and you need to take caution because they want you people to bury again while you people are staying here. They want you people to have another burial again while you are staying here. Not knowing it was my younger brother, the attack was directed to. He got my brother in the car, talking to somewhere. When he came back to get in the car, he he paired of shoes that was on his foot. He said, I didn't enter the car with our slippers. One foot lost today. We are still looking for it. After that incident, the night we we're going to get one or two things for the uh, for the funeral, what have you. He was surrounded by gangsters that are about to because they said that he ran into a motorbike, so the motorbike gangster gathered around the car to set him a blaze here his wife. So that was the death. But it was orchestrated. It might be looking at people came to kill, but it was orchestrated. So that was why I was coming. I'm saying that when people decide to do evil, they don't think. When people decide to get at you, they don't think. When the devil decides to unleash his, 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 his havoc, he doesn't think. So as a child of God, God has called out our concern that we should be very circumspect. Very, very circumspect. If you are not circumspect, the Bible will liken you to be what? A fool. You will be like a fool because you will not be walking wisely. Every child of God that God protects, every child of God that God stands with, God makes sure that he enlighten you to be circumspect. So when I went there, there were some things Many people couldn't see me and say, but you came just two weeks and one of you, why are you people being out of the country for long? But God was leading me to fast. So, I did, so my friends that I was interact with, I told them, you know, I mean, we'll see, we'll see. But I was, I was doing some fasting and prayer for preservation. The world we live in, prophet made a statement that you saw deaths this year, right? Yeah. You were not here, you didn't hear something like that? You saw what? Death in your deaths. The devil was on the rampage to swallow even young people, no matter the age. I was, I was, I was lying down thinking about what to minister today, and nothing came to me that tell them, minister to them, that they will be conscious in their work with me. Because the world we live in is evil. A brother here left from here, he went back to his country, and it was to give him a palm one. Why? Because the world war is evil. I'm not saying this to scare you or to frighten you. But what I'm saying is that Jesus said to his disciples, now see, Jesus said that he sent us, Matthew chapter 10, verse 14 to 16. He said, Behold, I sent you our like sheep and more. I sent you like sheep and more. So it means that we are living, but we are living in the midst of wolves. There are people that may laugh with you, but don't like you. There are people that may, may smile with you but don't like you. There are people that may pretend to be with you but they are far from you. I'm one person who is fully conscious of that. I'm fully conscious that the world we live in is wicked. I'm fully conscious that the world we live in is evil. I was working somewhere before and someone looked at me and said that, you know, he came to, to do something. He came, he was not qualified. For a loom. So I said, but look at this. We could have helped you and one of you, but your record is bad. I cannot, you know, I cannot do that. If I do that, management will think somehow and think that maybe I have a special relationship with you and try to go contrary. So I can't give you this loom. The guy was bold, and what he said is that he, he, he removed his clothes. He said, you see the beast around my waist? You got to be careful with me. I've been hearing about you like you want to be too strict in this office. And while he said I ain't left, the, the office board or the one that clean up, what we call the cleaning tech and what have you, had a dream that in the dream, someone came to the office for me. And he said, where is your boss? And he said, but why do you want to see my boss in that kind of a mood? 
So he said that the guy, the guy knocking down took something like a green bottle and placed it in his mouth. The, guy, the boy took sickness from that, from that dream. We even went to see him for his deliverance. So it was at a job that someone was coming after me. Are you listening to me? I could go on and on to explain a lot of things. I'm telling you, if you see me rejoice, it's because I've seen the hand of God upon my life. I'm seeing, I'm seeing God's divine protection upon my life. I'm telling you something the truth. Because the world we live in, I've, I've, that same environment I used to work, there were people, there was a guy that lost his cap. His, his cap. His end of baseball cap. He wore that cap, and the way he had it took from, and he died. There was a guy that stepped on a particular thing, and you thought it was something. He ate his toes, he caught his legs, he died. Now, you may think that you have left somewhere and come to this place. So, no, evil does not know location. Evil does not know location. Even there are people who may be where you come from are still releasing arrows. The servant of God said that a particular man was sitting in his apartment and a father came with astral projection from Minnesota and said, what are you running away for? We need you back. So if you think that being, being here has exonerated you from evil, you are just joking. The world we live in is evil. But you get to, you get to know what, what evil comes about and you get to know sometimes how to kind of prevent yourself in the midst of it. Because Jesus will never send us a sheep and we are not protected by him. No. He, we don't serve a God that is ignorant to our divine protection. We don't serve a God that, is, that, 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 that doesn't care. We serve a God that fully cares about our protection. Now, Peter came also to Jesus spoke, Paul spoke, and Peter spoke. Can we turn to 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8? 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8. First Peter, it says, be sober, be what? Vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking who? So, when Peter talks about being sober, it's the same thing Paul talking about being circumspect. To be circumspect is to be sober. I watched some Christians that went too early because they were casual. Are you listening to me? I watched some believers go too early. Not that because God wanted them. There are some things that happen that is not the will of God. Sometimes we just tie some things into the will of God. But sometimes we are careless and casual. So we allow things to happen in our life and we blame it on the will of God. I believe if God is sitting in heaven and saying, no, that's not my will. That's not my will. You are just careless. You are just walking without being circumspect. Walking, walking without being sober. So Peter is saying that we should be sober. But what are some of the things that breed wickedness in this world? What are some of the things that breed wickedness in this world? Number one, when you choose to be a light, you will attract wickedness. I listen to me. When you read Matthew Gospel chapter 5 verse 14 to 16, and even Luke chapter 8 verse 16, Jesus said that nobody light a light or a lamp and pour it on the bushel. No. Anytime you, you put forth a light, you bring it up so it gives light to the whole world. So when you are a child of God, you are born again, you are manifesting. Now what we read from first. You are called to manifest. When you are manifesting, it means that you are exposing some things. Some of you, that nobody has succeeded in your family. You are the one that's coming out like the light. Just watch it. Maybe nobody has built a house or owned a car or have raised to certain area, maybe own a degree. You are the one that wants to break loose. You are the one that wants to step out. You want to show light that light can come to this family. 
we can become what people think we are not. You are the one that decides to break up. When you decide to do that, rise up. No weakness is coming. That's why you see in some families, those who came up, they cut them short. Those were like the breadwinners. Those were the ones that was bringing light to the family. That the family was nothing but God was using them. But when they became careless and felt that everybody was their auntie, everybody was their uncle, everybody was their this and their dad, they saw their self cut short. Are you listening to me? It's not to scare you, but to give you an awareness that the world that we live in is what? Wicked. It's wicked. It's wicked. Very wicked. My brother was doing well at his past job before he got a, a, a better job. While he was there, someone looked at him and said, It's like, why every month you come with the first among us in terms of, you know, when they try to rate the employees? Because he said that in the branch you will come first. Then, then uh, because the, in, the, in the region you will come among the first five. So the person went to their country and brought something like a key with a dragon. So I asked him, I said, Do you hold it? He said, I'm stupid. Because you used to see the fight. The fight. Why does that come from nowhere and want to shine? Nobody stop you from shining. Nobody stop anyone from shining. And that's what we're in our second time. What I'm saying now is so long you want to be a light, you will be fought. Be a pastor, be a member, you want to be a light. If you do things that, that, is, that is not conventional, you, you are doing things beyond, you will be fought. Just know it like that. It's not to scare you, but to brace you, to make you to stand strong. The Bible says, after doing everything, that you should stand. Because the world we live in is wicked. The enemy will come like an like a angel of light. Will come like an angel of light. So if the enemy comes like an angel of light, it means that the devil will not will come like the way you know him. He will not come like the one you know him. I was in Liberia. A guy and his wife got married after many years of staying together. There was someone that brought a gift. When you open that gift, he will be paralyzed. His wife is here, but he's still in the chair. He's still in the chair. Someone came to like celebrate with them at their wedding. And you took a gift without discernment. With our discernment. You got paralyzed. Hello? You want to be a light. You are a child of God. You are born again. You want to show for God's glory. The enemy is coming after you too. It's not to scare you, but to brace yourself. So some of the casual Christianity, we sing nice praise and worship some, we go home, we come back. Brace yourself. Brace yourself. Brace yourself by prayer. Brace yourself by, being, by, by, by standing for God. You don't have your one leg in the church and another leg outside there. There are times when you decide to serve God honestly, attack will come. But at the end, we feel. But if you make yourself vulnerable with one leg so and another leg so, brethren, when evil comes, it will come after you. Because you are trying to expose the devil. You are going and telling people, say, come and see what God has done. And the devil don't want anything about God going forward. Are you paying attention to me? Now, another thing that draws evil is jealousy. Say jealousy. Jealousy is one of the strongest sins of the spirit. If you can conquer jealousy, you have conquered almost the entire part of the flesh. And what is jealousy? Anything that makes you have a negative feeling that someone is doing well more than you, that's jealousy. Anything that don't give you a good feeling, but give you a negative feeling that a brother or a sister is doing well. You see why pastors fight pastors? Because sometimes they think that this pastor is doing well more than me. So some pastors hire assassins. You have not seen it. Yes, it has happened in other nations. 
some here can attest. A pastor that hold a microphone will hire another assassin, say his church is moving forward. Get him down so people will come to my church. Anything that makes you feel that someone is doing well more than you, that, that negative feeling that I'm talking about. Because you can, you can feel good when someone is doing well. What have been an academic, business war, politics, and what have you, you can feel well. And if you feel good, is that goodness will inspire you. That if God can do it in the life of this brother or this sister, he can do it in my life. But anything that gives you a negative feeling that someone is doing well more than you, that's jealousy. You need to conquer it. Because jealousy gravitates to what? To envy. And envy gravitates to what? To hatred. And when you are hating people, now you don't want to see the ground they walk on. So people are wicked in this world because what? They become jealous. So if you don't conquer jealousy, there are some things you think you will not do. You end up doing it. If somebody buys a car, it, it makes you feel bad. They buy a house, it makes you feel bad. They dress nice, it makes you feel bad. They change their hair, do it make you feel bad. Conquer that spirit. Hello. And look at, you read in the Bible, see what happened. Can I take you there? It is jealousy that brings wickedness. Uh, 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 Genesis chapter, chapter 26, verse 12. Genesis chapter 26, verse 12. Let's just work it quickly. Hallelujah. It said, Then Isaac saw in that land and reaped in the same year a hundredfold. And the Lord was? And the Lord Then go follow 13. Then the man began to prosper and continue prospering until he became very prosperous. Just look how he described Isaac. And that thing that was happening to him it was something that was upon his head called the blessing. His father Abraham had left the scene, but he was still following him. Now verse 14. He said, for he had possession of flocks and possession of herds and a great number of servants. So the Philistines what? So the Philistines what? The Philistines envy him. Be careful when people envy you. Anybody that notice a trace of envy or jealousy in your life concerning me, I may relate with you, but at the corner of my mind, I keep you at a distance. Yeah. Are you listening to me? Yeah. Anybody that you notice in your family or wherever, that they fight you, there is nothing good you do that they don't condemn or say something or the other. You trust in an act of jealousy. I can relate with you by wisdom, but at the corner of my mind, I keep you at a distance. This man was prospering. And while he was present, it was something upon his life. He didn't steal it. It was God. The Bible says it's God that raised people. Now you are blessed now. You may want to be a blessing. There are some people that even today, today, they cash out it that they face. I don't say don't, don't help people. It's money that they send back home that is working against them today. It's things that they did for people. That the thing that is stabbing them today. Yeah. Now he said the Philistine envy him. Let's go to verse 15. He said, Now the Philistine has stopped all, all the wells which his father's servant had dug in the days of Abraham his father, and they have filled the earth. Meaning that Abraham dug a well, and leave the flocks of his, his sons and one of you will, will drink and have a good time and, and, and nourish his flocks. But the Philistine, because they envy, they cover it up. Go to verse, the next verse. And Abimelech said to us, go away from us, for you have become mightier than we. Now, see, a whole king now. Say, leave from here. You know, the man's blessing was too that kind of way. He said, go away. We don't want to see you because anytime we see you, we are irritated. That's what jealous people do. When they see people doing fun, they get irritated. They go to, they go to Sangoma. They go to, 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 to Necromancer. They go to people that know that blow champs. That's what they do. So if you are a child of God, you need to understand that the world is why wicked. Say, so go away from us. You have become mature than us. Why you come into the land of the Philistine, then you are mature than us. That's what some people will say to you now. Why are you here? Someone said to a person in the state, said that the car you are riding, I the one supposed to be riding that car. 
Now you burn it. The car you ride, that we the one supposed to be riding that car. A nationality of you was saying to another nationality as an immigrant, you will. They were born, you know, they, they, some people that they are born about themselves, they, they, they tear themselves out, they say out. So he said, You have become martyred in us. We are the Philistines. Why are you coming to the land of the Philistines? But forgetting it, the Bible says that as they saw in that land, so he was following the principle of his father. His father. And when he began to prosper, the Philistines envy him. Envy and jealousy is another aspect of that draws weakness. When you are doing well, what is prosper? To be prosperous is to do well. So long you are doing well, or your ch- some children are mad today because someone saw your child doing well and their child not doing well. So they conjure the name of that child and blow doors so that while that child's life is being t- the child has turned 360 degrees around. You say, is this my child? I thought the child was coming out because someone is standing to see that weakness happen in your family. I want to make it sense tonight. Hallelujah. Now, he, verse, verse 17. He said, then Asher departed from there and Pesh is staying in the valley of Jirah and dwelt there. He said, so you humble me? No problem. I will leave from here. I will go to another place. Now see what happened. And Asher dug again the wells of water which they had dug in the days of Abraham his father. For the Philistines had stopped them up after the death of Abraham. He called them by name which his father had called them. Meaning that after they, they covered another well, he said, I will leave, I will go another area. He dug again, they covered it. Con- continue and go, we're going as far as 21. Also, as the seven dug in the valley and found a well of running water. Can we go faster? But the herdsmen of Jira quarreled with as the herdsmen, saying, The water is ours. So he called the name of the well Isaac because they quarreled with him. Can we go further? Then they dug another well. So as it was not giving up, people who have dreamed, they don't give up. If you know where you are caught and where you are going, you don't give up. Because what you are carrying is not, just, is, is, is not a location. It is on you. That's why I'm convinced. What is upon my life, no one can take it. Amen. What God has called me to, no one can deny it or gain say it. I, be conscious of where you're going. They were fighting him, but you know where he was going. So then they dug another well and they quarreled over that one also. So he called his name Satan. Can we go further? And he moved from there and dug another well. And they dig and they, they did not quarrel over it. So he called his name Rehoboam. Because he said, for now the Lord has made room for us and we shall be fruitful in the land. So you see, people who fight you don't give up. They don't give up. If the devil come like this, he will come Another way again. The Bible says he left Jesus what? for a while, a season. He left Jesus what? for a while, a season. So when they come to attack your spouse, they may leave your spouse to come to attack you, or go to your children and attack your children, or leave your something around you. The enemy is fighting. We live in a wicked world. That's why I, 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 I become surprised of people who are Christians. When they're having their Halloween, they jump into air, then they think they jump back to church. Do you know what the people are doing? Are you aware? That one of the things called to be circumspect. Many Christians are casual. They see some things that are just casual. People are doing their thing, and they know what they are doing. But you choose to be ignorant and jump into air and feel that it doesn't matter. Many people who say it doesn't matter today, it matters now. I'm one person who don't, what should I say? I don't gamble my Christianity to make people feel good. In fact, I'm not called to be nice. God is a good God. To be nice is to make people to feel good at your expense. Jesus never told us to have sympathy on people. He told us to have our compassion. Not sympathy. There are people you sympathize with are the people... Prophet gave a statement. He said that there was a lady that was carrying her sister around for prayers. But I was a lady that was dealing with her sister. Yeah, brilliant. I was dealing with her sister. So, before I go for, uh, uh, I need to close quicker. Now, how do you live in this wicked world? Because if I don't tell you, I will not complete what I want to say. To live in this wicked world, 
you need to have sight. Spiritual blindness, no. You can't live in this weaker world while be, be spiritually blind. If you are blind, you suffer at the hands of the enemy. So tonight we're going to pray, Lord, open my eyes, open my ears. Open my eyes, open my ears. Open my eyes, open. The spirit of discernment is a spirit that looks beyond what they are seeing. Are you listening to me? What you are presenting is not what I'm looking at. I'm looking beyond it. So when people come to you, don't just look at them. Check headquarters. We you know what I call headquarters? Heavy. Many people bundle their two legs into their own problem today, today. They walk into their problem because well, no sight, no voice, nothing. They don't hear anything. So one of the prayers we are going to pray as we are about to close and bring the servant of God is to ask God, Lord, open my eyes, open my ears. Open my eyes, open my ears. One time, we had to have my father's 70th birth, uh, birthday. That time, when he was standing 70, while he was alive. We are playing with my brothers from here. I played with them. I said, man, it's going to be 70 years. So let's do something that will make me memorable. As soon as I came on the pulpit at the church in Africa, as soon, uh, because we used to sit, it's like the church that you, we, the pastors used to sit here. So as soon I was conducting the service. As soon as I came and knelt down to pray like I usually do on my chair, the voice of God told me to cancel it. Ah, 17. I was not thinking about that now, but that, I was thinking about the service. My whole mind on the service. He said, don't hold that celebration. Anything you have for him, bundle it. Package it. Just you and your family, the sisters and brothers, do it. He said that there are people that will be coming. And sometimes God allows us not to enter into things not because that he's not powerful. Even Jesus Christ, God told Joseph, say, take the child away and go into Egypt until I bring you one words. So we fight battle by wisdom. That's talking about being wise, right? So the wisdom of God is to, for God to tell you what to do at a particular time. So there are some things that you are doing that you ought not to do. You need to be wiser to fight your battle. There are some battles God will say, keep your mouth shut. There are some battles he say, go there. Because David, what David did was, he, the Bible says, you always inquire of the Lord. Shall I go after them? Shall I pursue them? So if you refuse to inquire from God, you may find yourself in some situation that you don't expect. So that the second thing, to what? That God will open your eyes. God will open your ears. Hallelujah. Amen. God will, you, 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 you will be led by God, by instruction. I've come to the place now, don't just do things. Don't just do things because you have the capacity to do it. There are people who have the capacity to do anything money-wise. Money they bought houses today, their cops went in. Yes. I know a lady... There's a particular church, a particular uh, where, where I come from. There was a market, and the house was behind a market. That house will remain empty for years. It was empty for years because people knew that anybody that entered that house, if they are full, they come out empty. So that whole environment knew. I think our bishop is aware about that. This lady had her daughter in the church, but she was not in the church. She was working with custom. Having money, change cars, and what have you, and things. She dared to enter that house. When she entered that house, she lost her job. Everything began to collapse. She came down. But she heard, but she felt that she had money. So even if you can afford a thing, pray about it. That's what we call inquiry. If you have a job, inquire. God, I reply. Is this the job that you want me to have? There are people who go to some places today, they are no more. Yes. There are people who talk job to some places, they are no more. No, excitement is good. But when you become excited, have a break and inquire a certain time of a certain time. The Bible says that there's a great door that is open, Peter was saying. But he said, but many are the adversary. So the more you see Doors open to you. 
don't be ignorant of don't 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 be don't be circumspect that as God is opening doors for you, also the enemy weakness is around. Yes. So God needs to give you the capacity to maintain some things. There are some things that you are joyful about, but it comes with other things. So don't only call for the blessings of God. When you call it for the blessings of God upon your life, know it goes with some things. People will come to envy. People will come to fight. If you want the anointing of God upon your life, you will have, you have fight outside and inside. Amen. Anything you want, what spiritual blessing, material blessing, you will have fight inside and outside. But you need to have the spirit of discernment. You need to have the spirit. Let us stand to our feet. Let us stand to our feet. I can't go further more. So we'll bring the servant of God. we we'll pray one prayer point. Lord, open my eyes. Open my ear. When I talk about your eyes, is that your spiritual eyes. Your spiritual eyes. Spiritual eyes. My wife had a dream. I think I said it here. Before the servant of God confirmed it with the prophecy. She went to bed. And she saw that we, we like, were going somewhere. And my daughter wanted to use the, hospital, uh, the, the bathroom somewhere. And when she went in while we were waiting for her, she couldn't just come up. We struggling. Why she's taking that long? Someone went in the bathroom. God forbid to molest her. She got her and said, "Ah, I didn't see something looking good." I said, "Let's pray." We have our family devotion. She went on second dream that the, our daughter was kidnapped. And when dream came two times, it's an emphasis. What God is saying that the attack is closer. It might require fast. If it repeat itself, God is telling you something. That's what I'm talking about. Let God open your eyes, open your ears. Then when we come, God ran it up, the servant of God, and said, no, don't allow her to go for vacation. So vacation, cancel. Are you listening to me? So we need to pray, Lord, open our eyes. Open our ears. So the word of God we are hearing from here, it don't fall on a deaf ear. Because the more you hear of God's word, the more God enlightens you. The more you desire the presence of God, the more he enlightens you. Light comes as the word of God comes. You need light, and you need light in the name of Jesus. Are you ready to pray? Say, my father, my father, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, open my eyes, open my ears, open my eyes, open my ears, in the name of Jesus, and deliver me from evil. Level your voices and pray. 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 Some of you, the reason why you don't keep money in your hand, there's some satanic forces that is causing you to be broke. Broke, 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 broke. So maybe as an arrow that is fired against your hand. You do the business, you don't have to see. You, you, you do this job, they fire you. You do the other. There's some arrows, some arrows of the enemy that is sucking your wealth. AK level, level your voices. I want you to pray. Pray, level your voices. Level your voices. There are some of you, the enemy have on their radar. They have you on their radar. They are saying you will not cross into July or you will not end this year. Level your voices and pray. Labor Santa Lava. There are some of you perhaps the enemy have sent arrow of sickness. And they say that terminal disease is the one that's going to kill you. Level your voices and pray. Level your voices. Lord, deliver me. Open my eyes. Open my ears. Make me circumspect. You are not praying. You are not praying. You are not praying. You are not praying. Yeba Baba Sotole. Yekotoli Wotalabare. Santa Lebele, Yeko Robo Santa Le, Yekuran Nambo Soto, Yekuran Nebo Santa Lebele, Yekeli Woran Naba Lebe. Open my eyes, open my ears, open my eyes, open my ears, open my eyes, open my ears. In the name of Jesus, open my eyes. Hallelujah, 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 Hallelujah. When you begin to grow or to make progress, I just show you in the scripture. It was not only he it happened to, it happened to Joseph. Now for Joseph, he by the saw it. But for Joseph, there was only a dream. So it means that the enemy know the power of dream. Sometimes your dream is such a way that when you keep speaking your dream, the enemy hears and he said people, many people that are fought in life are people who are carrying dreams. Joseph was not the only person that was in the king went after his brother. We are going to pray in the name of Jesus. 
anyone that won't, don't want to see me lifted, Lord, they are buried in the name of Jesus. Anyone that want to see me dead, anyone that said that upon, upon, upon my dead body, that the person will see, Lord, answer their prayers. I want to succeed. Are you ready to pray that prayer? Anyone that don't want to see my going forward, I throw in arrows of wickedness. Some of you, your marriages are falling. You think it's your husband. You think it's your spouse. But it's the enemy that don't want to see you people together. Because when you put out together, you will succeed. You may not find a perfect person, but you find a sincere person. But you keep believing from one sincere person to another sincere person. It's the work of the enemy that don't want to see you stable. A lady went to visit her friend and took her own clothes. And I was, she couldn't give birth in her marriage. It was exposed. I'm telling you what the enemy does. We're going to pray for anyone that don't want to see me. Exalted, lifted to your purpose. Lord, let them be buried. The one that want to see me dead, let them go in my stead. You want to be psychedelic about that prayer now, right? You want to be psychedelic. The person, I don't want to see you. They want to see you dead. Let them replace you. That's what I'm talking about. Lift up your voices and pray. Father Lord, anyone that don't want to see us succeed, anyone that don't want to see their place succeed, Lord, the evil that they wish for me, give it back to them. 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 Blessed be your name, O Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. Let's put our hands to let's put our hands together as we welcome the servant of God. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm sure I win. Hallelujah. Next 20 minutes, we're going to pray. Somebody say pray. pray. Put your hand together for Pastor Kofa tonight. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. We're going to sing one worship song quickly. Just pour in the worship wherever you are. Hey, let, just, let us just kind of get in the attitude of worship. We're not going to be long. We're going to be on time. Just do one worship song. Everybody in the spirit is worship. Hallelujah. Begin to worship the Lord. My God, I feel the pressure of the Lord in this place so strong. Do the worship or worship, not praise, or worship song. Copy a few scriptures. Jesus, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus.
Worship the Lord, whatever you are. Worship the Lord, whatever you are. Oh, Jesus. Yes, Lord. You are glorious. Worship the Lord, whatever you are. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. and come here and go by the same way. When you come here, you should purpose in your heart that I'm going to be blessed. The Bible says the expectation of the righteous should not be cut off. Amen, somebody. So when you leave your house and you come in the presence of the Lord, come with an expectation. So you can't be for sure. Come with what? Expectations, but I was the expectation of the righteous shall not be cut off. Don't just come here and go back the same because the Bible says, In the presence of the Lord, there's four there of joy. And the Bible says, Whatever two or three gather, I'm in their midst, and we up no more. That's no more here. Every time you call upon him, he's here. I don't know how you feel in tonight. But I sense in my spirit tonight, somebody pray is about to be answered tonight. I, I heard only three prayers. That means you don't believe. I said somebody pray is about to be answered tonight. 
Somebody say hallelujah. Listen to me, my brothers and my sister. It is very important in your life. And I said it over and over. And I gave scriptures reference. And I've given you scripture loving the Lord. Continue to tell me this thing. That is very important to stay to remain on a recovery. Very important. God never changed that. There are several reasons why God wants you to stay on a covering. David said, he that dwell in the secret place of the most high God shall abide under the shadow. Shall abide under the shadow of the almighty God. Bless God for the message tonight. Did Pastor Kufa bless the Lord. Amen. I want to kind of like in the next 15 minutes, I want to kind of just, in order to escape this evil world, there are things that you need to do. And this generation is so stubborn. We have a lot of unbelievers in the church. Hallelujah. And one of the things that Jesus struggled with, it was unbelief. They saw him. He ate with them. They fell him, but they did not believe. So Jesus said it this way. He said, if thou can believe. He not talking to everybody. He said, if you can believe, you are not limited. All things are possible. Not to everybody, but to them that believe. You can have a prophet if you don't believe me. That prophet cannot profit you. It is the belief in that prophet that will make that prophet profit you. Every man under the sound of my voice in the world, you need a prophet. Somebody say hallelujah. You need it. You can have a pastor. Whatever. You need a prophet. I'm not flat by that prophet. God sent me in the generation. Hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. We learned from your son and I told my daughter, honestly, I said, honestly, I see trouble. Call me on Monday, 12th. 12 in the afternoon, don't miss it. She set her alarm. 12! My phone rang in the afternoon. I was about to pray and scatter some arrows that fly by day. You don't know arrows fly by day? Oh, oh my goodness. Terrors operate at night. Arrows fly by days. You don't know the arrow the enemy sending through the day. I said, I see arrow! And we pray. Go on Facebook. Go to Honesty Morgan. She put a testimony there already. There are some things that was going to damage her and damage her for life. It was going to damage her and damage she watching right now. Damage her for life. I don't want to go through it. She's going to give her own testimony. I saw it ahead of time. And I said, call me 12. Somebody said, what? 12. And we begin to scatter, to uproot, to break down. Now, watch this. If honesty was not connected or belief in the oil over my life, she was going to be frustrated the rest of the year. I don't even think she was going to come to church. You can ask something small I'm talking about. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. I didn't pass a kufa. We've had a dream twice. A, their daughter be raped. They did not tell me because that's not something to tell somebody. They came to church here. And service was over. And the spirit of God said, no, call her. Here, prophet, call her. Let her pray for her because I saw rape on it. On this girl. Amen. And we'll pray to cancel that kind of thing. Somebody say hallelujah. Now the evil world we live in, what will prevent you, what will save you, is when you are under. Somebody say hallelujah. When you are, because you don't know what is ahead of you. Don't despise it or begin you. Amen. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. And Mecca went to the office. I saw him, Jenna. He and myself were talking something. He mentioned Brother Nosani. Ah, but he's serious. Yeah, America there. Ah, but he don't play. He don't joke with God. He said it in me. I said, so you can be observing Nosa. Or you can observe Nosa. Nosa will collect some of your blessings. Somebody say hallelujah. <laughs> he, he ain't there. He killed. Nobody top it. Yeah, top it. I admire this man. It's if to say you're the only person that you have. I'm not speaking to somebody here. Hallelujah. Listen, it is not time to play with God because you don't know what is ahead of you. 
Martina gave records of him. Listen to me, people of God. I want you to understand this. Look at Isaiah 54, verse 17. I don't want to take my time. Isaiah 4, 57. Let me tell you who are qualified to be protected from the evil that we are in. Amen, somebody. Somebody shout hallelujah. You, listen, yeah, 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 Mama Elizabeth. And I see what Johnny is going soon. Don't worry, she will be coming. Listen, this woman of God said to me, I look forward to coming to church. And like I'm hungry, I've been praying for every day to be Friday. <laughs> Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Her children were spiritually attacked. And they came here. God break them loose to deliver. They are so happy. All their life, they have been somewhere and no delivering. No delivering. No delivering. She's right here. No delivering. Everything's cut out because of her connection. And she came to connect herself to the prophet. Today, her children is delivered. They are talking. Amen, somebody. Somebody say hallelujah. And it's important. Don't take it for granted. Because you see me face to face, don't mean that you should play with what God plays over my life. Forget about my human part. There's a nothing on my life that no money can pay for. You can't pay for your life. Somebody say hallelujah. You can't pay for your life. They were able to throw our daughter in prison. She found a lawyer that ate 7000 dollars from her. Free of charge. Cancel all the address on social media. After she put 7000 for Junior, after she put 7000 dollars in the account. They were about to deport her. She had ang I thought that your hand the poor bracelet, but she had her own on her legs, monitoring her by immigration. She go, she don't, she don't go certain distance. She has an anger bracelet on her leg. She called me crying. You get lawyer seven thousand on internet, chop money free, cancel everything. Come to prophet, prophet, prophet. Am I speaking to somebody here? We joke and play with money, play with God. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. I am lying, saying it live right now in Minnesota where we stay before moving to Texas. There's a guy called J.R. Jehara was on deportation. He was on deportation. I'm a son, Amos. Amos, I came from Minnesota. I'm a son. Amen. Amos, no, but I'm a son. Amen. Amos, no, but I'm a son. 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 The immigration arrest the guy. He was in prison at Anosa. And the day of deportation, he was in the plane. He was in the, the talking. I'm on live, I'm saying this. The talking in the plane for deportation. A uncle ran to me. I was living in, uh, in Crystal. There's a place in Minnesota called Crystal. He started banking at my door. The apartment complex guy said, hey, it's early. He's sleeping. What's happening? He said, I want to see him. Because we're living in the same neighborhood. He said, prophet, they are deporting Jara. Jara is on deportation. As I say right now, he's in the plane. How can God? That God will say it's a miracle God. Somebody say hallelujah. Yeah. Nothing could change Jara's deportation. He cried to me. And I said, let's pray. If I be a prophet, he said, but you're already in the plane. He said, I said, if I be a prophet, somebody said, hallelujah. We hear, we pray. I said, why you came to me now? If you already in the plane, let us pray. I know a God who can set people free. I know a God who can bless his children. Somebody said, we pray. The plane delayed. Somebody said, the plane delayed. Listen, there are some things that belong to you. God will delay it until you see it. No one will take it. Something just came on me. That testimony is there. I, I don't, I scale a lie. I, I don't use the law in a big line. That double punishment. Amen. Somebody, I'm telling my daughter, Joanne. Holy Spirit, there with her. She sent me a test. God bless you, mama. You are blessed. Somebody say hallelujah. Am I speaking to somebody here? The plane today. What we are praying? The plane today. Do you know prayer can hold some things? Things that the enemy want to take from prayer can hold it down. Prayer can control some things. Somebody say hallelujah. The plane today. After the prayer, he placed a call. To the immigration lawyer. After the prayer, he placed a call. I said, call the immigration lawyer. Call the immigration lawyer. He said, they are deported. Jara is getting deported. He said, right now in the place, he said, come, come, come. Let, let, let's go, let's go, let's go. They went to the airport, Minnesota, St. Paul Airport. The plane was still there. They have not left. The immigration officer entered the plane and command Jara to come back to redress. Oh, my goodness. Listen to me. I'm telling you, surety. God be ever allowed. God punish me. Hear me. The immigration officer entered the plane. He said, we want their case redressed. Somebody said, hallelujah. Do you know why the plane delayed? Do you know why he has to come call us to pray? Somebody said, hallelujah. 
oh my goodness, you don't understand the power of God. Some of you, you are too much familiar with anori. You don't know how it moves. You don't know how things happen. You don't know. This is to me. Somebody shout hallelujah. The plane delay. The immigration officer entered the plane. He asked them to put Jared down for redressed. And the old man went to the, they asked him, do you have anyone to plead for you in the courthouse? That morning, he came with a wheelchair. He sat down, he said, it's my nephew. He said, why is his lawyer? He said, I'm his lawyer. Then he told the immigration judge, I was there. He said, if you deport the man, our country, they are wish hunter. We wish hunting everywhere. People are dying. If you let the man go by whom, when they kill him, the blood is on your head. He told the judge, he said, the blood is on your head. Because the country just came from crisis. You want to, and they are wish hunt, wish hunt everywhere. You want the child to go? You want him to go and die? Right away, the judge said, okay, we're going to prepare every document that he needs. We're going to redress the case. We're going to take this thing. Today, St. Tony to JRA is still in America. Somebody shout hallelujah. I don't know why the enemy had delayed for you, but our prophets are God will redress your case. I said, God will redress. Somebody stand and pray. Say, God redress my case. Open your mouth. Stand on your feet. Rap up. God redress my case. Redress my case. God redress my case. I need redress. Some of you, God been visiting your case. God been coming to your cases. But I come to let you know tonight, there's going to be a redress. Pray that prayer tonight. Redress my case. Redress Readdress my case. Readdress my case. Let it be a redress. Somebody say hallelujah. Pray that prayer right now. Readdress my case. Readdress my case. Readdress my case. In the name of Jesus. In my favor. In the name of Jesus. As I have 54 verse 17, let us read it to him. Some of you think the blessing is just for everybody, but I come to let you know the blessing that God spoke about is for particular people. And many of you refuse to do that. Let us read it again. Because you love this scripture, I want to read it to you, and I want to tell you who it belongs to. Let's read it together. One, two, three, everybody read. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Never tongue arises. Against you in judgment, you shall condemn. This is the inheritance of the servants of the law, and their righteousness is from me. Repeat that again one more time. One, two, three, go. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Every tongue that rises against me, you shall condemn. This is the inheritance the seven of the law and their rationale is from me said the law. So that scripture the only way the pastor could for preaching that there are evil everywhere the only that can protect you from evil when you are a seven there are weapons everywhere look at your neighbor and say are you a seven no no be serious on that. are you a seven or are you a sure person are you a seven? Somebody shout hallelujah. Made your mind to be a seven because the time is coming. Listen to me. Last night, I'm not a politician. But the election did not go in favor of Joe Biden. And I was saying it last night. I saw it last night. We got to pray. That's what I saw. She was the heaven be my witness. I saw that God I told my wife. Amen. I saw Senator removing. A own life, I'm saying this. They were redrawing himself from behind Joe Biden. I saw that. So I'm seeing like, I, I, I will end that prophecy some other time, but I just want to give you a clue what I saw last night. Amen, somebody. I don't say something. It, it, it got to be some prayer. It got to be some God intervention. Amen. Because I swear it was not good. Amen. It wasn't good. Amen. Amen. It wasn't good. As a matter of fact, mark this down and mark it down. And, and go back and play this after what I'm telling you. During the election time, I saw Joe Biden was in the hospital. Amen. Amen. We got to pray. You know, I'm saying my own thing because I'm so, I know who's speaking to me. And I know the God that I serve. Somebody say hallelujah. I know the God that I serve. Amen. So you got to understand. That you got to understand that these evil days we are, you can only be protected when you are a seven. Are you a seven? I don't want to take much time. 
Because we're going to be straight on time this time. And uh, the Lord himself talked to me about time. Please, you want us to end on time? Please come on time. Amen. Our service is 10 o'clock on Sunday. From 10 o'clock to 10 30 is discipleship classes. Our divine service, I'm going to send this message, it starts from 10 30 and to 12 30. And we're going to be exact on that time by the grace of God. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. So if you come here to talk, like you only got 30 minutes in service. And now we're going to be serious because God himself began to talk to me about these things. Somebody say amen. Amen, amen. amen somebody. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. Let me ask you one question. If you were in Africa, let me see, who, who you are not from Africa? Who you are not from Africa? <laughs> I want to know who you are not from Africa. Everybody here almost? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think you praise and both of you. Mm? <laughs> now, I, what I want to say is this. If you had an appointment to the American embassy for visa, <laughs> and they tell you your appointment is 8 a.m., Praise God, somebody. Uh, when will you go there? I mean, when will you go there? You won't come to. Have you taken a miracle over God? Is a miracle important more than God? When we say 10 30, you come in 11 30. When we say 10 o'clock, you come in, you drink. Listen to me. How are we taking God and we want God to answer? Us? The moment we pray, we want God to answer. Father, if you don't come right now, I will die. Die. <laughs> Amen. If you had an appointment for a job interview, you have not been working and you got an appointment for the job interview. And I tell you, your appointment, your interview is 10 a.m. Let me see when you will go there. 15 minutes late. They know that when they give you that job, you will always be late. <laughs> Amen. Because first impression matter. Your first interview, you 15 minutes already late. Or your first interview, you testing the people that you don't have no relationship with. I'm running late. Ah, that's your best be. Imagine the way we take God. Oh my God, that thing is hurting my head. Mail your mind in your life. If you make the try this thing, if God not work for you, then call me a false prophet. Make God a priority. Somebody shout hallelujah. Am I talking to somebody here? Somebody shout hallelujah. We got to do this thing. Listen to me. We are ready to move Goshen forward. Somebody say hallelujah. We are moving forward. We are going forward. No backward. We are going to make this thing. We are going to listen. And make up also people. Why are you not in church? Listen, that's the file of God will be placed on somebody. Because there is a place where people come and get healing and get delivered. And guess if we look at this, honestly, look at Pastor Kufa. See my dollar here. Somebody was about to wrap her with hundred, hundred thousand of that. But because of the grace you honor, she will be. Don't despise little beginning. Amen. The Bible says so in Zechariah chapter 4, verse 10. He said, Do not despise. Because some are looking for big churches to go to. There are some big churches. There's no power. Am I speaking to somebody here? There was, I'm not against big churches. Don't get me wrong, because myself praying to get big. But I'm saying every big church starts like this. So you want to be a part of the church to grow it to that level. Am I speaking to somebody here? Somebody shout hallelujah. Every big church started it. So I want to bless you today as a prophet. I'm going to take a 21 day fast before my 100 days fast start. I want to let you know that God have graced me to bless you. Somebody shout hallelujah. He has graced me to bless you. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Father, bless your people tonight. Amen. Thank you for the message. And the day I even, how can we be? God said, no weapon from against then shall prosper. This is your reward as a servant. Eh? If you are a servant in a restaurant and they can't see you every week, will they keep you? No. Nope. Will they keep you? No. Hannah was at a temple every morning. Until the priest said to her, you are drunk. You are drunk. She said, I'm not drunk. I'm a woman in desperate need. And the priest prophesied to her. He said, from now to next year, you will have the son. The, the priest saw her desperation. The priest saw her commitment. The priest saw her faithfulness. And blesses her. Hallelujah. Somebody say amen. He blesses her. And he blesses her. Whatever you want, God can do it. But it depends on your commitment. God can be ten in line for one man. 
The one who is committed on the altar will collect that man. Prayer can do anything. I'm serious. It's not just the Bible says God will never let his own down. Can your children come to you every day? They cry for something, it's in your power to do it. Will you deny them? Jesus said in Banu, He said, Listen to this. He said, There's no way a son will ask a child for bread and give this stone. Our heavenly father is not like that. We are going to pray lastly because I've gone five minutes of your time. We want to pray, God, help us to serve you. Whatever have to do with God, we want to get involved. We want to be blessed. We want God to do it. Somebody shout hallelujah. Am I talking to some? What do you want God to do for you? What do you want God to do for you? Speak out now before I pass away. I'm just, what do you want? I'm on a financial freedom. You live in Texas here? You live in Texas from where? New York? Where are you coming from? We want to pray that God, Father, in the name of Jesus, will release the grace of God over his life in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We bless you. My sister, come here. Listen, stand. Let me pray for you quickly. Who brought you here? Is this your first time here? Your second time here? Did I ever give a word for you? Did I ever prophesy on you before? Stand up. What do you want God to do for you? Before November. Before November. What do you want God to do? Before November. When when you were born? When your breath? When your breath born? Hmm? April. Before November. What do you want God to do for you? Marriage ceremony, come here. Somebody say hallelujah. Rabo Shita la Baba. Before November, April is your birthday. Before November, raise your son. Let me pray for Say right there. Holy, holy, are you, Lord God? We bless you. We bless your holy name. Let the anointing fall upon her. Let the anointing fall upon her. Everybody stretch your hand. Begin to pray for her. Let the anointing fall upon her. Down to her heart's desire. In Jesus' name. Father, we thank you. We give you glory and give you honor. In the name of, we break, listen. Makalaba. You are not married. You don't have a child. Father, we thank you. We bless you. Do you know anybody named Abayomi? That's my brother. Your brother? Mm -hmm. Where's your brother? He's at home. He's at home? Mm -hmm. He's in his house. He's in his house. Mm -hmm. then what, when I touch you, your brother didn't appear to me. Abayomi. He didn't appear to me. He married? No. No. Is this your elder brother? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He's not married. Mm -mm. And you are not married? Mm -mm. There's a hindrance in your family that for relationship, especially for you, that is coming up. Somebody say hallelujah. Father, we decree now. We bless his name. We pray, Lord. If I, I see a lily that's going to mislead him, I'm going to pray because you are here now. So God can do I'm a prophet of God. You don't know me. I don't know you. You know what I'm saying? I'm praying now. God. Can you just put your head down over there? <laughs> you want you to? No, 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 no. I mean, just like this. Uh, be free. Try to be free. You're not free. Something is bothering you right now. Rabu Skila Baba Shandala Baba. Have you seen the man you want to marry? No. You don't know. You talking to somebody? No. Not at this person. You were talking to somebody before you did not work out. Raise your hand to heaven, right? He took advantage of you. But Father, I decree and I declare in the name of Jesus. Rabo, 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 Rabo. What's your name? Diola. 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 I did the rain. I did the rain. I did the rain. That's what I'm saying now. Did you call that need to me here? No. Did you call it to anybody here? No. Uh -huh, but I mean, I'm saying. That was, you asked the picture. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Father, we thank you. We bless your holy name. 
I crush every demonic spirit from over your life. Everything I come to stumbling block your life in the name of Jesus. As you are entered the church, your life will never be the same. We destroy in the name of Jesus. I saw you marrying somebody that will love you so much. I see you marrying somebody that will take care of you so much. I see the guy is an evil guy. He's coming, he's loaded, he's rich. His father has some business in the car. But I see God going to really establish you and God going to bless you. Your father, I'm seeing, I see God is going to give you a baby girl. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus. We bless you, we give you glory in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Father, for blessing her life. Give me oil quickly. Give me oil. I want to ignore this, brother. I see trouble in your life. I see trouble in your life. I cancel the trouble. Every cook case I command you to be destroyed in the name of Jesus. Bless your name in the name of Jesus. Bless your name in the name. Amanda, you know him? Eh? You invited him? Oh, my goodness. Put your hand down. I love you. You married? You looking for something? Let me warn you now. Because I see you doing it. If you... Talk to anybody on social media. It's a trap for you. The enemy will destroy you. I saw you connecting somebody on social media. There's a connection I'm seeing on social media. I saw this connection. It will not be. Are you understand what I'm saying? I'm warning you, you don't know me, right? Because of my people, I'm, I'm advising you. Any relationship that has to do with social media is a trap for you. I saw Patrick in Shiva Trouble. What's your name? Patrick. All right. Somebody shout hallelujah. Father, we thank you. We bless you. And destroy that spirit. That want to destroy you in the name of Jesus. I saw Patrick was trapped with a social media relationship. And the enemy didn't play with you. My brother, I'm a man of God. 26 years I've been prophesying. Travel the world. I'm warning you. You know what I'm saying? Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. If you don't have a church, come here on Sunday. I will show you your wife. She's not in the church, though. I will show you your wife. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen. I bless the Lord. I don't want you to make mistakes. Because having a worse relationship will make your whole life trouble on this earth. Don't do it. Hmm? Don't do it. Patrick, you're my friend. Okay? You wonder how I know you. I know your birthday, your age, your father, everybody in there. I know that. God show me all right now. Hallelujah. Somebody share hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Ifosa is your last name? It's your first name. And your last name, Patrick? And I see you Osa, Osa, Osa something. What's that? I go. Right, that's what I saw. And that's your last name? Yeah, that's my son name. That's your son name. I saw it now. You say you don't know how I know these things. First name, Melody, or... Father, we thank you for my baby. Bless her name, Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. We thank you in the name of Jesus. You got a good heart. Keep it up. You got a good heart. Hmm? You got a good heart. You got a very good heart. Keep it up. God going to bless you. Hmm? you. I got a good heart. Don't, don't. Take, keep taking care of this man. You know what I'm saying? Every day I say that. I know he, he, he talks. A lot. That's what I see. He, he gave you promise. He talks. He talks a lot. I, I saw that. He 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 keep back. He, yeah yeah. He talk. Yeah, just he knows something because last night we were in your house. You all had a call. He called just talk to me. But I pray that God. I was in your house. <laughs> uh, I don't want to scare you. Amen. <laughs> Father bless your people in Jesus' name. God bless you. I've gone fifteen minutes of the time. God bless you. See you on Sunday. In Jesus' name. You are going blessed him. Put an offering. I'm going see down tonight. Don't go empty handed. You know, that bless the man of God tonight so he can buy gas to go home. Everybody do that and God will surely bless you. Thank you for coming. Service is 10 for disciple classes. Let's keep the time. You see, I'm letting you to go home soon. So please. Let us go. Hallelujah. Uh, no, 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 no. You got eczema.